this now. Israel and Hezbollah have traded strikes across the Israeli-Lebanese border. The latest round of attacks began early this morning when Israeli forces launched what it called a preemptive strike against Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. Hezbollah says it launched more than 300 rockets and several dozen drones toward Israel. Hezbollah calls it the first phase of its retaliation for the recent killing of its top military commander. It also describes the attacks as a complete success. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel said this about those strikes. This morning we detected Hezbollah's preparation to attack Israel. Together with the Minister of Defense and the Chief of Staff, we instructed the IDF to act proactively to remove the threat. The IDF has since been acting vigorously to thwart the threats. It destroyed thousands of rockets aimed at the north of the country. It also thwarted many other threats and operates with great strength, both in defense and attack. I ask you, citizens of Israel, to comply to the directives of the Home Front Command. We are determined to do everything to protect our country, return the residents of the north safely to their homes, and continue to uphold a simple rule. Whoever hurts us, we hurt them. Now CNN is covering the breaking developments as only we can. CNN's Ben Wiedemann, Nick Robertson, and Nada Bashir are in the Middle East. Camila DeChalis is standing by and watching response from the White House. And our military and global affairs experts are here as well. We start at Beirut, though, with CNN's senior international correspondent, Ben Wiedemann. Ben, let's start first with what we know about the uh, success, the effectiveness, as we should describe it, of this uh, attack, what uh, people killed in Lebanon. Well, in terms of the effectiveness, Victor, we don't know yet. What we know is that Hezbollah has put out several statements uh, saying that they're their military strikes have been completed successfully. They say they launched more than 320 missiles at 11 military targets uh, along the border with Israel. All of them, for instance, uh, surveillance, observation, and uh, air control posts along that border. And they said that the purpose of those 11 strikes was to open the way for drones, it said, to go into the heart of Israel. One statement claimed uh, that the target of those strikes in the heart of Israel, one of them was a major military facility. We have yet to hear any comment or details of whether that site was hit, what that site was, and the extent of the damage that occurred there. As far as the situation in Lebanon itself, the official national news agency of Lebanon has described the strikes by Israel this morning as the most intense that Lebanon has seen since hostilities began uh, last October. I saw one estimate that there were at least 25 sites that were hit in really just the course of a few hours. And our understanding is there are still some strikes occurring in the south of the country. Now, the Ministry of Health is reporting a preliminary death toll of three people. One individual was killed on a strike in a car in a town near the border. Uh, two others were killed in a strike further away uh, from the border. Now, the situation in Beirut remains calm. We haven't seen any air Israeli warplanes overhead. Uh, there have been many cancellations of ingoing and outgoing coming and outgoing flights uh, here in Beirut at the airport, which is right uh, behind me. But other flights seem to be uh, operating normally. Now, Israel seemed to indicate that they had knocked out much of Hezbollah's uh, rocket launching capability in the south of the country. But, Victor, it's important to keep in mind that Hezbollah's real uh, serious weaponry, its long-range precision missiles, are not kept in the border area. They're much further north in more fortified uh, areas. We saw twice in the last week Israel did strike what appears to be weapons depots in the Bekaa Valley uh, to the east of here. We saw some very large secondary explosions, but it's believed that Hezbollah has capabilities that it has not used in this round. Uh, at 6 p.m. local time, which is in four hours, uh, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah is going to give a speech. Now, the strikes of this morning, he, they, Hezbollah said, were the first phase. In this speech, we'll probably get an idea whether there actually will be a second phase 
or not. Victor? Yeah, it was notable to hear him say it was the first phase. What does that mean? Where does it go from here? Ben Wiedemann, thank you for that. Let's go now to CNN International Diplomatic Editor Nick Robertson, who is in Tel Aviv. Uh, Nick, let's just take a quick step back because this all started with Israel launching uh, what it called a preemptive strike, uh, a, an act of self-defense to thwart what they said was an imminent attack from Hezbollah. Walk us through this timeline and also Hezbollah's strikes. Was that a reaction to Israel's preemptive strikes or was that more an act of retaliation for the killing of uh, Hezbollah's military commander? Yeah, look, I think if we go back about a week, you can see there was a significant escalation of strikes between Hezbollah and Israel. And over the past couple of days, uh, Israel seemed to be indicating that it was detecting uh, a, a, an increasing level of threat coming from Hezbollah. The security cabinet met in the early hours of the, mor of the morning, as the IDF said, more or about 100 aircraft were hitting 40 locations, taking out what they say were thousands of missile launch barrels. Not the, mis not the missiles themselves, but launch barrels. And that was their preemptive strike. And as you say, Hezbollah was able to launch uh, what they claim were 320 missiles and drones back towards Israel. Uh, it's not clear, you know, what was preemptive uh, and, and, and what was Hezbollah actually at the ready not normal for Hezbollah to have so many weapons at the ready to go at any one time. So it seems that the intelligence Israel was basing its preemptive strike on had a degree of accuracy because Hezbollah had more weapons than normal ready to go and they did fire. Um, the IDF say that the targets were mostly in the north but some were in central Israel. The IDF has not given any specifics about any of the military sites that the 11 military sites that uh, Hezbollah claims to have targeted. Uh, and the IDF is also saying that the damage was very little, uh, very little damage. We know of one civilian only uh, who was wounded by falling shrapnel, uh, and that was in the north, in Akko. To the north, the country went on to a higher state of alert. Uh, planes were stopped from flying out of Ben Gurion Airport here in Tel Aviv. They've restarted now. They're delayed, uh, many of them. But there were, there were uh, stricter conditions put on social gatherings, uh, leisure and cultural activities. Banning was banned on the beach here in Tel Aviv until an, a half an hour half an hour ago and now in now closer to Tel Aviv and extending closer to the northern border some of those uh, restrictions have been lifted but tighter controls are in place in northern Israel close to that border warning people to stay close to their shelters as Israel analyzes Hezbollah's next move and the impact Hezbollah has had on them. Yeah, Israel on alert uh, has been on alert for, for weeks now as it also awaits a retaliation from Iran as well. Nick Robertson, thank you very much. Let's bring in CNN military analyst, retired Air Force Colonel as well, Cedric Layton. Uh, good to see you, Colonel. First off, what is your take on what's happening now? I mean, this is the heaviest fighting that we are seeing in months between Israel and Hezbollah. Um, in terms of this preemptive strike, launched by Israel. What kind of intelligence uh, do you understand they must have been acting on and what kind of targets uh, were hit? Yeah, good morning, Amra. As far as we can tell, the intelligence that the Israelis had was extremely precise. Uh, based on what we hear from the IDF and also from uh, what Hezbollah is telling us, it seems as if the Israelis had an indication that uh, equipment and uh, the rockets themselves that Hezbollah has were being moved into uh, a launch position. And given that, the Israelis decided that they needed to strike and uh, take them out uh, before they could hit Israel. Now, of course, over 300 rockets uh, and missiles did make it uh, uh, into Israeli airspace. Uh, that is to be expected given the volume of, of rockets that Hezbollah has. Uh, but the preemptive attacks, as well as the Iron Dome system, which is Israel's air and missile defense system, were, I think, critical in uh, mitigating as much damage as possible uh, to uh, the Israeli side. So this uh, is basically a reiteration of what uh, the Israelis have done before, uh, but it is, uh, I think, a very critical component uh, that indicates that the Israelis are still very capable of uh, interdicting 
uh, the uh, Hezbollah efforts to, uh, to attack them. Hezbollah says that phase one, uh, the goal was to attack some of those defenses, disable them, so that on phase two, rockets, drones can go deeper into the heart of Israel. Do you expect that that will be successful on phase two? What do you know about the Israeli defenses that might suggest that they are more vulnerable now after phase one? Well, it, Victor, it depends on uh, what the Hezbollah uh, uh, forces were able to do. If they did, in fact, take out uh, radar installations that the Israelis have, that would increase Israel's vulnerability. Uh, it doesn't seem as if they have been able to do that, based on what we know at the moment, uh, except for maybe one location where that could have occurred. 